Hey what's up guys, I'm Linux here and welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial, I mean sorry not Unity tutorial, welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So fun fact, this is actually my second Godot tutorial, I made my first one yesterday where I showed you guys how to make a master volume slider in Godot 4. And uh, yeah, so today's video is going to be on the basics of animation in Godot, so if you do enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And also something else that I want to mention too is uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter so then you can get updates on any games or any YouTube videos I'm uploading or just, you know, uh, just tweets from me in general or posts as they're called on uh, Twitter now since Twitter is no longer called Twitter, it's now called X, but, you know, I still call it Twitter anyway. But yeah, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter yet, and you just want to get updates on, you know, my games and all that sort of stuff, or just want to see what sort of random stuff I'm tweeting, well be sure to follow me on Twitter or X at Omegonix, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say there. Oh, and also, I'm on Blue Sky now as well, if you guys are on Blue Sky, be sure to follow me on there, uh, I'll show my thingy here, so then you guys can see it. And uh, yeah, so now anyways, without all, with that all out of the way, how about now we get into today's tutorial. So as you can see here, I'm in a pretty much empty 3D scene, with just a camera in the scene, nothing else. But um, anyways, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting out an object to use as an example for the animation. So in your scene, um, if you don't already have a scene, what you want to do is press this uh, plus icon here and then you can create a new 2D or 3D scene, whatever you want to do. But yes, anyways, we're just going to be using this scene for this tutorial, so what you want to do is if you don't have an object in your scene to test out the animations with already, um, you know, just right click on your main level node and then uh, press add child node. And then what you'll want to do is just get any type of object you want to, um, you know, I'll be getting a, just a mesh instance for this tutorial. If you guys already have an object you want to animate, then, you know, you don't have to get out a new object if you don't want to, of course. Um, but yeah. And then, uh, with, uh, if you get out a mesh instance like I have for the example of this tutorial here, um, what you'll want to do is, when you've got your mesh instance 3D selected, You'll see in the top right here uh, a, a field that says mesh and it says empty. What you want to do is you want to click on this empty section and then choose a new mesh. So I'm just going to be choosing a new box mesh since this will just be a box. And uh, yeah. So now I'm just going to move this over here in front of like the, uh, the camera so then when I start the scene we'll be able to actually like view the cube here. So yeah. If you guys don't know how to get out a camera for your scene and you want to have a camera like what I have here, you can just uh, right click on your main node, go add child node and then search up camera 3D and then boom, you found it. Alright, so now that we've got the object in the scene, what I'm going to be doing is selecting it. And then what you want to do next is you want to right click on your object you want to animate and then go add child node again. And then this time you want to search up animation player. So here we have the animation player and as you can see by the description it says a node used for animation playback so this is what we'll be using. And then boom. So once you uh, apply your animation player as a child to whatever object you're going to be animating, you'll then notice that the animation window should pop up here. And as you can see it's pretty empty at the moment. However, if you click on the animation button, you can then select to make a new animation. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. So we're going to go new, and then we're going to create a new animation. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to call this example animation, and then OK. And then boom, here we are. So now that we've got the animation player node added, and we've got the animation made, now I'll show you guys how to actually do the animating. So select your object, and you'll notice now when looking at certain properties, like let's say for example I look at the transform properties here, you can see that there is now a key, um, and you might be wondering what does this key mean? Well what this does is it actually sets the keyframes for the animation. So let's say for example um, at the start of the animation I'll want to set the keyframe for the position of my object, so what you'll do is um, in your object's properties you'll want to go to the transform tab and then you know 
press it so then you get the uh, transform stuff show up. And then what you might want to do is you'll then want to keyframe the position or rotation of your object. So if you want to uh, add a keyframe to your animation, what you do is you just uh, select the key on wherever you want to on your object, whether it be for the position, rotation, visibility, or just, you know, whatever you want. And just select the key. And then it'll say create new track for property position and insert key. And then you'll want to select create. Now, as you can see here, it automatically ticks this thing called create reset tracks. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not really too sure what this is for. I think this might be for resetting the animations or something. I think that's what it is for. Is it's for, um, you know, just, yeah, resetting uh, when there's no animations playing, I think. So um, if you want to do that, you can. You can create a reset track. You don't have to if you don't want to, though. It's not really too important, but yeah. We'll go create. And then boom, so now I have keyframed the position of my object. So now let's say for example I want to change the position of that object in an animation, what would I do? Well as you can see on the animation timeline here we've got, uh, you know, 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5 and this is basically like the seconds it will take for an animation to occur. If you want to make your animation longer, as you can see, um, uh, only like the first uh, second of this animation is actually highlighted in light grey. That means that this animation will only go for half a second. I mean, sorry, a second. But if you want to change how long the animation plays for, in the bottom right over here on the animation window, you can actually see like a little watch icon and then a number next to it that says 1. Well, if you change this number, so let's say for example I change it to 3, as you can see here, the animation has now been extended to 3 seconds, and you can change this value here, whatever you want. Alrighty, so now what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be going to a random uh, time in this animation. So let's say, for example, I go to the 2 second mark in the animation. So if you want to select a point in the animation you want to go to, just, uh, you know, just left click on whatever part, and then boom, you'll be put to that time. And then so what I'll do now is, so now that I'm at the two second mark, if I change the position of my cube, so let's say for example I move it up, uh, if I then press the key icon here to set a new keyframe, what that will then do is if I go back to the start of my animation, as you can see, the cube now goes up slowly. So yeah, the uh, animation works. And so then for the final second, the first third second here, I might want to have my uh, object move back down. So once I move my object back down, I'm then going to set another keyframe by selecting the key icon again. And then boom, now the uh, cube is going up and down basically. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much just how animation there works in Godot. Um, you know, pretty simple stuff there. And you might be wondering now, okay, so now that I know how to animate in Godot, how do I actually get my uh, objects animations playing in a scene? So if we were to start up our current scene now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save the scene, and then I'm going to click play to debug. So as you can see here, our animation is currently not playing for our uh, our cube here, so how can we do that? Well, I will be showing you guys a scripting method of playing animations today. Um, so yeah, this is just going to be like an example of how to script your animations in Godot and how to actually, you know, uh, get them playing when your scene starts and stuff like that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, getting our object here, the Mesh Instance 3D, and then down the bottom I'm going to select where it says Script and Empty, and I'm going to click on where it says Empty, and then I'm going to go New Script. So this new script is going to be for the animations, and it's going to be how this object uh, object's animations play. So I'm just going to call this um, Anim Script. Um, oh, sorry, Anim Script anim script example since this is just going to be an example script to show you guys uh, sort of how to get it done and so um if you've never actually made a script in godot before basically this is a window that pops up whenever you make a new gd script and uh what you want to do is with this uh top stuff here you don't really need to worry about any of this 
but the path you'll need to worry about. So uh, make sure you select the correct path of where you want of where you want your script to be created. Just click on the um, file icon if you haven't already, and then um, you know depending on what folder you're in, if you're already in like a folder like the scenes folder, then click on this arrow to go back to the parent folder, and then you can then create a scripts folder if you want to by creating create folder, and then you can create a scripts folder, and then this can be where your uh, GD script is saved. So yeah, and then you'll want to go create, and then boom, we have a new script. So what I'm going to be doing to start off here is on the third line, I'm going to be entering at export and then var. Now what this will be doing is we're going to be exporting a variable, which basically means we're going to be making it a public variable. And I'm going to call this variable um, anim, as in the animator. And then we're going to do the two dots here. And then we're going to then write animation player, since this will be the type of variable we want for this object. So yeah, so at export, I mean, at export var anim, then the two dots, and then animation player. So basically what this does is, let's say for example in Unity C Sharp, you're entering a variable to get the player's animator, or just an object's animator in general. What you would do is public animator, and then the name of the variable. Well, instead of doing public animator, and then the name of the variable, here in Godot you put at export, which basically means public, and then var, and then your name of the variable, and then the two dots, and then you put the uh, type of that uh, variable. So if it's an animation player or another type of node, then that's what you'll put here. So when you enter in that variable uh, for the script, if you go back into your 3D scene with your uh, object selected that you're going to be uh, adding the script to and animating, you'll notice how at the top of the uh, object's properties now, you'll see your variable actually pop up and you can actually assign it. So I'm going to be assigning my variable right now with the animation player here. So just as you would in Unity, be sure to drag your animation player over to the public variable and then boom, it will be filled in. Be sure to save your scene often as well. Alrighty, so now let's go back into the script view which if you don't know how to change the views from 2D to 3D to script, you just uh, see these tabs up here and you can select them. So with the animation, uh, what I'm going to be doing as an example is at the start of the scene, we're going to have the animation play. So we're going to be going anim, and anim is referring to that uh, animation player variable we have there. And then play, and then in parentheses, and then we're going to be doing quotations we're then going to be entering the name of the animation. So the name of my animation is called example animation. So that will be the animation that I want to play. And then, so at the start of the scene now, our animation should actually play. So let's check that out. And then boom, as you can see, the animation of the cube just played at the very start of the scene. Hopefully you guys saw that correctly, um, you know, it is pretty much just a grey looking cube on a grey background, so it might be a bit hard to see, but I think you guys should see that well. I'll play it again, just so then you guys can get a second look. So as you can see, the cube is moving up and down, and then it stops. And you might be wondering, okay, so how do I actually get the animations looping? I know how to play an animation now, but how do I actually get it looping? Well, to get an animation looping, you just do this. So let's go a line above the anim.play line. And what you want to do is you want to go anim dot and then underscore get animation and then parentheses and then enter in the name of your animation. So for example, uh, example animation. And then you want to go dot loop and then equals to true. So now your animation will actually loop. And if you don't want it to loop anymore, you can then enter false, of course, but yeah. So let's say, for example, we want it to loop. Now let's actually test this out in the scene. So as you can see now, the animation is actually looping. We now have a, a looping cube animation. And uh, yeah. Alrighty, so that there guys is the end of this Godot tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more tutorials like this. 
Um, if you are new around here, I used to make a lot of Unity tutorials, but recently I've decided to switch to Godot after the whole uh, Unity runtime fee fiasco that's been going on. I am still making one last project in Unity called ULEM Shadow Memories, which you can play the demo of on itch.io or wishlist on Steam. But yeah, I've decided uh, that I'm going to be doing mainly Godot tutorials from now on since I don't really want to show my support towards Unity after what happened, and uh, yeah. Be sure, to give, be sure to give me your feedback on my tutorials in the comments below as well. This is my second ever Godot tutorial, so it would be nice to get some feedback and see uh, how I could improve, whether I could make my tutorials more easier, or whether, you know, they're not advanced or whatever, something like that. If you'd like to play a Godot game made by me, actually, I recently released a game called Mushy's Kitchen Cheese Rampage on Itch.io for free, so be sure to check that out if you want to. It is a horror game hidden underneath, and it is also my Halloween special, so yeah, be sure to check that out if you want to. And again, guys, uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all soon next time. Bye-bye.